Welcome to the Tower Update. I am uh, relaxing comfortably inside Spence Manor today, and that's where I wanted to talk about one of the things in Spence Manor that is, uh, I've been slowly working my way through, which is the entire collected works of Elbert Hubbard. <laughs> Now this is uh, one of his series called Pamphlets that he released. Now who is Elbert Hubbard? Elbert Hubbard was an interesting guy, maybe one of the earliest proponents of the arts and crafts movement in the US in the late 1800s. Um, he actually uh, was an author, uh, a kind of a bit of a philosopher, and sadly uh, came to a tragic end with his wife in the sinking of the Lusitania. Elbert Hubbard founded Roycroft Press, and the Roycroft campus is actually a part now, I think, of Cornell University, but it was sort of originally a hub for creators and makers and artists. He was uh, maybe the original unintentional hipster, <laughs> or maybe let's say the first Nick Offerman. He founded the Roycroft campus for those kinds of people and for the pursuit of what he called a belief in working with the head, hand, and heart and mixing enough play with the work so that every task is pleasurable and makes for health and happiness. He actually started uh, in the late 1800s, 1890s, he started writing this thing that, and releasing it, two things actually, that were sort of magazines that he called pamphlets and I think Frey, and um, they were, uh, you could subscribe to them, and actually the subscription list had some pretty important people on it, and he would simply jot down some thoughts and then send it out periodically. Um, reminds me a little bit of what Roy has created with the Monday Morning Memo, and uh, in uh, the time of him creating the pamphlets, and this, by the way, is volume one of his release of the pamphlets, um, he was having a discussion with his son, and they were arguing about uh, old heroes of America. Bert, his son, was arguing that the real hero of the Spanish-American War was a young man named Lieutenant Rowan. Lieutenant Dan Rowan. Now, not Lieutenant Dan like you think Lieutenant Dan, <laughs> but Lieutenant Dan Rowan. And he told this story, which was that President McKinley, uh, during the Spanish-American War, desperately needed to get a message to General Garcia, who was leading some of the Cuban insurgents in the Spanish-American War, but they had no idea where Garcia was, and they had no idea how to reach him. Uh, but if they didn't reach him in time, they were about to have a mission that would completely fail if they couldn't reach him in time and let him know that it was coming. And they desperately needed to get him a message. They just weren't sure how to do it. And someone said, spoke up and said, President McKinley, if you need to get a message to Garcia, I know just the man to do it. His name is Lieutenant Dan Rowan. McKinley handed this message to Lieutenant Rowan and said, could you get this to General Calixto Garcia, please? And Lieutenant Rowan said, yes, sir, turned and left. Now the most important part of that story became the theme of a message to Garcia, which he actually sat down and wrote out and sent out in one of the pamphlets. And the point of the message was that this young man, Lieutenant Dan Rowan, did not ask, how do I get it to him? Uh, where is he? How do I find him? What do I need to do? What if I can't find him? Are you sure this is the right way to get it to it? I don't know if I can do this. He didn't provide any excuses, any qualifiers. He simply said, yes, sir, and left to do the thing. And what he wrote about Rowan in the story was this. Rowan took the letter and did not ask, where is he at? By the eternal, there is a man whose form should be cast in deathless bronze and the statue placed in every college of the land. It is not book learning young men need, nor instruction about this and that, but a stiffening of the vertebrae, which will cause them to be loyal to a trust, to act promptly, to concentrate their energies, to do the thing, to carry the message to Garcia. This is something that is in the soul of the academy, that we stand for the people will simply go and do the thing instead of coming up with all the reasons or critique or excuses why it doesn't make sense or critiquing the people whose idea it was, why they shouldn't have to do it or it's someone else's job. No, to just stop and go do the thing. That is our kinds of people. Now someday we are all going to band together and if you wanna be involved in this, shoot me an email. We are going to band together and fund a bronze statue 
of Lieutenant Rowan on the Wizard Academy campus. This is something that one of our closest friends and instructors, Manly Miller, has had in his heart for years, and we are going to try to make it happen in 2019. If you wanna be a part of that, shoot me an email, put a message in this video, and I'll pull you in on the team, and we're going to do something amazing together, which is craft one of the only, if not the first, statues of Lieutenant Rowan in the United States to the honor of the men who just make things happen. Until tomorrow, may your crazy stay this side of legal, and may you return before we have time to miss you. Cheers.